Hello everyone. On today's episode of Tinkering with Terrius, we're going to take a look at the Corad KD3005D Digital Control DC Power Supply. So as you can see, the power supply is pretty normal. We've got the voltage on top, the amperage below it, overcurrent protection, constant current light, constant voltage light, and the lock light. Now the lock function makes it so that you can't adjust the voltage or current. It locks out the knobs on the front. So we got some rotary encoders by the sound of it. And we have the power button, which is the standard push button. So we have the positive port, the negative port, and the ground port. Positive, of course, is going to be where any positive voltage comes from. Negative is going to be similar to ground. However, this is a floating ground, so it is not connected directly to the earth connection of your power cable. This is an earthed ground, so this one connects directly through all the way out to the ground pin of the power cable. So on the back, like in the unboxing video, it has the power switch. If you're using Euro power, you will have it at 220. If you're using North American power, you will be at 110. And then it has the rating for the fuses. I have plugged a power cable into this already and honestly I'm not a big fan of the connection. It's not super tight, it's a little bit loose, I'll show you that in a second here. But down here we have the fuse. So the fuse is just this little tray here, there's a little notch there that you can get a screwdriver in. I couldn't get it out with my thumbnails but they're fairly short. The standard glass fuse there. I suppose you could probably swap it out to a high rupture capacity fuse if you want, but it comes with a spare fuse. So that is a huge bonus, is a F5 AL250 volt fuse. So it clamps the fuse in like this on the plastic piece, and then inside you actually have the contacts for the fuse. So it's externally isolated from the rest of the stuff. I don't know how well that would contain an explosion if the fuse popped, but all in all it seems pretty decent and it is in there very snugly, so it seems seems nice enough. On the back it has the standard warning. There are no operation serviceable components inside and do not remove covers, refer servicing to qualified professionals professionals or personnel. And for anybody curious, this is the power cable that came with it. It's a standard 10 amp, 250 volt power cable, just like you would find in any computer. There's the ratings on it. It's a fairly short cable, it's only about four feet long. So the power connector isn't all that great. You can see Hopefully there, it does not go in all the way. So in most PC power supplies that would go in completely and it would be fairly firm. But this one, you can see there's actually a substantial amount of wobble to it and that is the maximum it goes in. I cannot push that in any further. Wish it was a little bit snugger because that doesn't fill me with too much confidence. So these are the alligator banana plugs it comes with and they're pretty terrible. See the plastic casing on the red lead is actually broken slightly. Doesn't look like it is on the black one but the red one is definitely cracked. It says maximum of 5 amps but I would not want to send 30 volts at 5 amps through these. The banana plugs feel decent on the unit. Nice gripping amount in there. The other thing I don't like about these particular leads is that they're the screw-on variety, so the screw is exposed. It also means they're not properly crimped in, they're the screw crimp instead of proper soldered connections or proper full crimps. The alligator clips, fairly small. They do have a nice amount of shield that you can slide up. So all in all, those aren't too terrible, but Let's see what the connection is like. So basically it's a stripped wire coming through and then it's just held in place by the little crimp that's supposed to be holding the alligator clip on. 
a yeah. It would be nice if they had bothered to solder this right there. Not the greatest connection in the world. And yes, exact same on the positive plug. Very corroded, as you would expect from all of that exposed copper without any solder or anything to protect it. Was the first thing I would recommend is investing in a decent pair of alligator clip probes. And we are going to check the voltages using these two meters so that we can average it out if they're wildly different. I just have some alligator clip probes and some regular probes and they are tied together. We are going to clip on the alligator leads from the power supply. And I do realize this is a fairly janky setup and not ideal. So they're both currently in agreement that this is zero volts. Now we're going to turn on the power supply. You can see nothing's happening. You have to actually press the button to start increasing or decreasing anything on the screen. It's the same thing with the current. Out of the box, this was set at 5 amps and 31 volts. Don't just plug it randomly into a circuit or anything. Make sure you turn it on first and lower the voltage down so that you don't toast whatever you have. But you can see with this set at 0 volts, it's in constant voltage mode. There's 0 amps coming through. The meters are reading negative 0.72. We're going to go up to 1 volt. Okay, there's a fair difference in the readings between the two. Oops. Two volts. And we'll go through all of the volts here. Now when you switch between 7 and 8 volts, you can actually hear a relay clicking inside. Between 14 and 15, there's another relay. Now, because this is a rotary encoder, it is possible to occasionally jump two or three digits by accident. So be careful. The next relay is between 21 and 22. And it goes up to 31 volts. Let's see what goes on when we go when we go one millivolt. So the lowest scale that my Neotech and Tac Life meter can do is millivolt. From what I can see with my meters, for now it seems to be working decently well. Unfortunately I don't have a dummy load, so I don't have anything I can really test the constant current with. So right now I have the current set at 1 amp, the voltage at 0. We're going to connect this little LED, and we're going to start turning up the voltage. 1 volt, no light. 2 volts, light. 3 volts, dead LED. But if we come in here to the current and we reduce that, we can put it down at something like 20 milliamps. Now when we increase the voltage, doesn't matter how high we turn the voltage, it's going to be locked in constant current. So it's only ever going to draw 2.3 volts. That is an extremely handy thing to have. I highly recommend always setting the amperage first, otherwise as you can see you can easily burn out components. And so you can find out what the actual running voltage of it is relatively well, it's not going to be 100% accurate there. This is a blue LED.
so it's running at about 3.1 volts there is a bit of voltage drop across the cables as well it was about 0.1 ohm from what my multimeters said so keep that in mind but it definitely seems to be working the constant current functions properly be careful if you disconnect components however while the voltage is set the moment it's disconnected it goes back up to full that is super easy to burn out a component if you have for instance the voltage set at something like 10 volts then when you take this off it's going to switch back to 10 volts now if you connect it again it's going to take a little bit before it actually switches down the voltage and that could potentially cause some fairly serious damage if you're not careful because I have this set at a very low amperage it's not burning out the LED but if you had that set at one amp it would have instantly killed the LED so it works very well the only thing left to do is to open it up I suppose now I'm not gonna mess around with anything inside I'm just going to take the case off so you can see what's on the inside and I might look and see what the fan is before we open this up, of course, don't open it if you don't have to. I'm opening mine so that you don't have to, theoretically. There are capacitors in here that could be of a very dangerous voltage. So I was hoping we'd be able to see some information on the fan, but you can see the fan is completely isolated. I don't even see where the power connector is coming out. So this is a... 63 volt 6800 microfarad capacitor that is a very very beefy capacitor it's guaranteed to still have charge in it there's probably yeah there's probably a resistor across it to discharge it when it loses power but don't mess around with that one uh, we got a little chip in there Looks like it's a TP41C. This resistor, of course, which is yellow, purple, red, gold. In the back there, there's a few chips. Those are connected to this plate. And then, of course, the fan is blowing directly across that. Uh, all of the connections are stuck in other side of the transformer so you got the mains coming into the transformer it looks like these are the two relays that we can hear clicking when I was going up and down in voltage I mean it looks very clean inside it's actually substantially more impressive than I was assuming it would be got our current shunt coil some more resistors this one looks like it is brown black black gold this one looks like it's red black brown gold quite a bit of beefed up solder on the back of the circuit board here whether that is just from reflow or not I'm not sure it does look like it might have been added to handle the extra current so the big capacitor is a Rubicon cap so that's not terrible the little capacitor doesn't say very heavy duty coil on the transformer crimped ground connectors and they are screwed onto the casing directly so very good quality I'm actually very impressed seeing as it's not certified or anything I was sure it was gonna be some janky stuff going on in here but this seems actually really well done makes sense why it's such a heavy power supply with that huge transformer in there but all of the traces look really nice they're really thick on the power board Anyway, I'm going to put this back together now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video and you want to see more videos, then be sure to give it a big thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you feel like it, definitely share it with your friends. Maybe if you know somebody who's looking for a benchtop power supply and they're not sure which ones to get, this video might help them out. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the section below or you can email them to me or tweet them to me. I try to answer every single comment that I get and every email and tweet that I get as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.